everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing this, the newly released Bachmann Ivac Class 2MT 262 tank in British Railways lettered on the side tank livery. So then, as we, let's have a quick look at the box and yeah, right. So then, as we can see here, it says exactly what it is, which is more or less what I've just said. Here we can see the loco in its nice British Railways black livery, which all of them carried except for one, but I'll get onto that a bit later on. Uh, on the side, we've got this. It says LMS Ivac 2MT Tank 41227, which is the one that's included in this box. It's in British Railways lined black, and it requires a Next 18 DCC decoder. So then, on the back, we've got a bit of a brief history, which basically, they were built as mixed traffic locomotives for LMS by George Ivett, and they were introduced in 1946, and to, and to today, there is only four uh, in, pres in preservation, including two on the Isle of Wight steam railway, one on the mid Hants, and one on the Worth Valley, which... Is the one that is not in is the only one that's carried a non-British Railways livery in the Keithley and Worth Valley Railways opening uh, livery in the red. So then, let's get on to opening this out of the box. So then, now that we've opened the box a bit, let's have a bit of a look at the paperwork that you get inside the box. So here is the infamous uh, Batman Collector Collectors Club. Uh, which you get with, I think, every everything from Batman. Just basically trying to tell you to join up. I don't think it comes in wagons and stuff. I think it's only in locos and DMUs and etc. But, yeah, if you want, if you ever get one of these, I would definitely maybe try. I don't know if I will, but it's good for some people. And then here we've got the owner's manual, which is quite useful, so... As you can see, it shows you how to fit all the separately fitted pieces, which I will get onto in a minute. There is the blanking plug here for the next gen 18, and there it shows you how to do the lubrication and put in and where the brake rod is. When we open this up inside, as you can see, so it shows you here more on lubrication. Further down here, it shows you um, where to take off. Uh, well, how to take off the locomotive's body. And then here is how to fit the next gen 18 decoder. And also motor accessories and stuff. And then on the back, you've just got a bit more on how to add DCC sound. Which I would recommend go taking, if you've got a locomotive like this, maybe taking it to roads and rails. Which is where mine will be going once I have enough money for that. Uh, so then, in the, over here, with, in the box, we've got a bit of, can't get it out, but separately fitted detailing. So as you can see here, we've got the brake rigging. Come on. Uh, we've got some vacuum pipes, we've got some steps, it looks like. We've got the chain, I'm on focus, the chain link there. And yeah, we've got a few other separately fitted details. Right then, I'll get this out one last time and then we can take a closer look so then here we go now let's take a closer look at the Ivert tank 2MT so then looking at it from the front well from the front end as you can see just here here is the uh, nicely printed on uh, number plate here which says 41227 which is nice and crisp, easy to read. Uh, down here, we've got the builder's plate, which I think it says crew, but I can't be 100% sure. It's a bit small, is that? We've got the lamp irons here on the front, one, two, and three, and one up here on the top. We've got, uh, yet again, along here, we've got the hand railings, which go along all the way around here on both sides. However, on the front as well, if I demonstrate, we do not have sprung buffers, which is quite sad, but 
I suppose it doesn't bring a big deal breaker because you know how often are you going to really use it anyway with sprung buffers. It is something that more newer engines do sort of have but it's not a big deal breaker so yeah. Moving on as we can see um, here I think this might be um, correct me if I'm wrong but looks like some sort of steam pump on the side because I've seen one of these on apparently all three of the um, Ivor tanks that I've read from the Midhance and the two on the Isle of Wight have a steam pump on the side for the brakes on the coaches because I believe they use um, a different braking so it's either vacuum or the other one I can't quite remember on the top of my head but I think that's that if it's not then please do let me know here we've got the tanks, which on the side of the tanks is the printed British Railways and the number as well. Just above the number here is the letter 2, indicating that this is a two-rated passenger locomotive. It also is a freight, as I said at the beginning, it's a mixed traffic locomotive. So here we've got the glazed windows right here, one window only in there, one in there as if, I think, it's as if it's opened, like you would more so because obviously you need as much ventilation in the cab as you can. Here we've got the safety valves and the whistles. From glancing they look like they are, um, they might be metal. I think they are, they feel cold so I would assume so. Like most of the model, the, well I mean the model is as a, a die cast um, body so that's quite good rather than the plastic uh, down here it's got good and not too chunky um, piston rods and stuff all the rods aren't like the really old chunky stuff and yeah that's pretty much it the doors here on the, the cab doors don't open and more glazed windows there so then that was our brief little overview of the loco as you can see it looks stunning there let's get it onto the track do a little test and then at the end we'll have a running session right then here is the locomotive on the tracks so we're going to give it a good little test running forwards and backwards before we do the ultimately the running session at the end now just before i get going i think i briefly touched on this but the one that, I've, that I was on about that isn't in the standard British Railways livera and has carried a separate livera is the Keith Linworth Valley Ivor, which is numbered 41241. And that is in its uh, livery that it wore on the Keith Linworth Valley Railways opening special. And it carries a special Keith Linworth Valley Railway red livera with Keith Linworth Valley Railway written on the tanks and their logo where it says British Railways. Right then, let's get on with testing it. So first we will go forward. Backwards again. As you can see, it runs very well and it's not too loud. On the and this is obviously DCC, so as you can see, it just runs backwards and forwards really nice, doesn't do any silly behaviors like stuttering or etc. Right, let's just bring it back and do let's do a slow speed. So, this is set on speed no, speed one, and this is on 28. So, I'll bring it past. And then run it back on, I'll change the speed step on the controller to 128 to see how slow the crawl is. But as we can already see, on 28 it is just really nice and this is speed number 1. The lowest we can go on 28. So stop it there. I'll change the speed step to 128. And this is just speed 5, which is the lowest I can go with it, uh, so it is then moving. 
as you can see, it does a beautiful crawl with practically no stutter, just like the world's smallest bit, but it's hardly even noticeable. Like you on camera can't even practically see it, but it's just just such a smooth runner. This is speed step 10, by the way. Let's bring it back into shot. And there we go. That is the uh, review of the Ivor Tank. I will now leave you with a short running session. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you guys later. Bye.